Thank you, Mr Speaker. According to the 2021 census, over 80,000 people live in the Oxley electorate on the mid-north coast. It's a wonderfully varied population, with 9.1 per cent identifying as being of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander heritage. And, interestingly, we have the highest rate of personal care workers in both paid and unpaid work in the state. Mr Speaker, I acknowledge the Gadigal people here and all of the Biripai, Dungadi and Gumbangna nations who are custodians of the land on which we walk and where we live. I acknowledge the elders of the past, the present and those that will emerge. Welcome everyone here in the chamber today, my friends and family in the Speaker's Gallery and those joining us online from the Mid-North Coast and further appealed. Oxley is a stunning region that stretches along the eastern coast of New South Wales. The region boasts incredible landscapes from the rugged shorelines and sweeping beaches of the Pacific Ocean to the tranquil rivers, lakes and rainforests that are spread within the hinterland. It is a breathtakingly beautiful region and in and amongst this natural wonderland is the most vibrant array of different communities. Oxley encompasses four magnificent valleys, the Hastings, the Maclay, the Nambucca and the Bellinger. And it's famous for its beauty, its flora, its fauna and its farming. Small plateau towns like Comboyne and Dorigo, where it drops five degrees as soon as you get to the escarpment. Where quiet streets wind amongst the hills, avocado and cattle farmers abound. It's the quiet, laid-back atmosphere that draws you to these solid country people. Coastal villages like Crescent Head, South West Rocks, Nambucca Heads, Urunga and Valor. Villages that cater for the tourist, the retiree and the thrill seeker all at once. These communities have people and businesses that continue to work all year round. Importantly, serving locals throughout winter to be able to provide for the tourists during the peak of summer. There are upriver communities like Long Flat, Willowarren, Bowerable and Thora that sit on the banks of creeks and rivers with rolling hills, significant wooded areas and the sounds of gurgling water. The farmers and inhabitants are those loyal, hard-working and trustworthy men and women who go about their lives just getting it done. There are the rural town bases of Warhope, Kempsey, Maxwell and Bellingen that are surrounded by beautiful open farmland. They house small businesses that keep the area running smoothly. This area that provides food, minor manufacturing, tourism and a relaxed way of life is our home. It's our passion. It's our everything. On top of the people here and the small businesses that house our hardworking people, we also have the home of the Akubra, made in Australia. <laughs> and we are the birthplace of Milo. How many scoops do you do? <laughs> the people of Oxley are unpretentious farmers and tradies. They are artists, artisans, creatives and innovators. They are carers, teachers, healthcare professionals, police and emergency service folk. They assist and serve visitors out of the big smoke. They volunteer. They collaborate and spend hours of their own lives helping others. It is high time we recognise and acknowledge the important contribution our country folk make to the fabric of New South Wales. In short, they are a microcosm of the bigger world, just in one region, our region. And all these people I serve with humility and pride. Today, I stand amongst my esteemed colleagues and within this venerated institution, committing to the region and people of Oxley that they will always be at the centre of every decision I make. As I progress through this term, 
I will call on the current government to reduce any city-centric policies to maintain the necessary levels of infrastructure and improve and expand upon the current healthcare facilities as well as increase the numbers of police and healthcare professionals. I recognise that it is difficult to, vast, to police vast areas and that rural people have to travel for acutely specialised care. I will rally to work with the government to deliver the resources Oxley needs in these two critical areas. In fact, I've requested meetings with both the Minister for Health and Police already, because access to health care and feeling safe are significant priorities for our electorate. To the people of Oxley who have faced years of drought, black summer bushfires in 2019 and 20, and the devastating floods of 21 and 22. That's not even to mention COVID. I know you were looking for someone who will speak their mind, keep true to their values and word, someone who has a strength of character to represent their interests. And I pledge to uphold your expectations with my behaviour and the example I set. That level of behaviour is held already by so many people in our electorate. From the teachers educating our kids to the nurses looking after our families. The surf life saving clubs and emergency services making us feel safe. One example of these types of people is Richard Swan. Tiny is the alter ego of his nickname. I won't be giving any rewards for guessing his dimensions. It's the typical Aussie reverse humour. Suffice to say that Tiny is a larger than life guy who has done deployment after deployment with the Rural Fire Service. This was highlighted to the extent that he spent 53 days straight fighting the fires in 2019 and 20. 53 days straight. He also did back-to-back -back missions up to Lismore with us to help clean up after their devastating flood experience. I can't tell you the total number of deployments he's done. But Tiny epitomises giving to others in the community. He's a shining light for resilience. Another, another example of resilience is the way our four mayors and general managers have dealt with the repeated disasters our families have endured over the last few seasons. It has been a difficult time and our society has fought every step of the way. That was under the leadership of our councils. To the support from our local community, to have the support from our local community means the world to me and I will be making it my goal for as long as I am in this place to be the one that ensures the electorate of Oxley is known for its people, not just its landscape. My story is one of not quite getting it right early, of making mistakes, of being thankful that the environment around me was enough to allow me to learn from those mistakes. It is one of finally accepting the support of a couple of mentors after many before them had tried. <laughs> My story is one of working hard and making the most of the opportunities within our culture and our society. And finally, it's one of work ethic and attitude providing the opportunity. Where in other countries we might not have got so many second chances. There are so many people to thank, so many moments in my life that led to this point. The point of being sworn in here as a member of the New South Wales Parliament. I am unable to thank you all and want you to know that I value all of you who supported me at each crossroads in my life. I ask that you all realise I carry with me that support in many different ways. I can describe but only a few here today. <coughs> the first group of people are the voters of Oxley, those that went out and voted for me as their preference, those that could not support me as their first preference but put me in their priority list, and also those that didn't support me. Thank you for being a part of one of the most democratic processes in the world. Thank you to the Nationals head office and the members that are sitting up there, those awesome people who decided to pre-select me 
and jumped at an opportunity to get behind me in the campaign. Down to earth people like Jim Kerr, who's sitting up there in the gallery, just up there, Jim put down what he was doing for the first few months to get me over the line. He committed fully and is a great mate. Where are you, Jim? <laughs> On the campaign trail, I nearly sidelined the longest serving, most loyal and service oriented person I know. You see, I was Brian Irvine's treating clinician for cardiac condition. I was concerned he'd have a heart attack with any increased stress when putting up signs or standing out in the sun. Well, he must have listened to my treatment because here he is sitting up there after being the consistent glue that kept a team of people working towards success. Mate, it will take much more than a campaign to stop your heart. <laughs> that Nationals family includes all the members and people who got out in the rain and heat to have chats with others and hand out for me on pre-poll and election day. It was a great campaign that brought local issues to the fore. It's something I'm very passionate about. I'm certain I can learn a lot from the people in this room about campaigning, but I for one was taken aback that more than 250 local Oxley people would want to give up their time to meet with me, to help guide me on each and every one of those particular issues facing their valleys, and then to follow through on handout roles despite their busy lives. Thank you. Tragically, we lost Paul Welsh quite unexpectedly during the campaign. His wife Sylvia, a part of that Nationals family, who coupled with her late husband Paul, were two of the first people to invest in me as a politician. I have chosen to dedicate this moment to you. You see, Sylvia is a vibrant, caring superwoman who connected immediately with me, particularly due to her genuine, curious and most of all, compassionate nature. My heart goes out to you, Sylvia, and to your extended family. I must also sincerely thank my staff and the patients of Keystone Health. As an employer in a small town, I've always thought about making yourself available, about listening, and about giving time for people to speak. And I've always thought that that is the best way to connect. When considering politics, I realised that I would have to give my all to the families of Oxley. I would need to make myself unavailable to my staff and the patients. I asked Sarah Hollis Watts and Chris Bear Gray, how about running my clinics? How would you feel about managing someone else's business? I gave them one week's notice, by the way. <laughs> well, I can tell you, both of those employees and my wider staff have absolutely stepped up and are coping with great composure. Their attitude and application has allowed me to focus wholly on getting elected and representing the down-to-earth families in Oxley without conflicting priorities. Speaking of the families in Oxley, I will characterise their struggles and continue to ensure the local people, yes, you, the people living on the Mid-North Coast are provided for on a level playing field by the New South Wales Government. To my family and friends, thank you. I will need the support of all of you. There were many nights during the election where sleep was difficult to fit into the 24 hours. My incredible boys, Ashton, Pearson and Leighton, who put in many extra hours during the campaign, they coped with Dad being away more than normal, they got up early, they went to functions, they handed out and really just took it in their stride. Thank you, boys. You are amazing. The support I received from my extended family was invaluable. I will be forever remembering and cherishing the respect I have for all of you. I can't name you all, but to Bridget's mum, Marion, and her husband, David, who time and time again help out whenever needed in our lives, I want to say thank you and to tell this story. You see, I needed a couple of extra volunteers and thought I had it sorted as they were coming up from Canberra. Excellent. I've got two more on the booths. <laughs> oh. yeah, well, 
When David got there, he flat out refused. <laughs> and told me that there was no way he was handing out unless he was wearing a red shirt. Send him home. Send him home. Send him home. He's got to go. He's going home. Order members. <laughs> he went on to explain that he was a staunch Labor supporter and just couldn't bring himself to hand out for the Nats. Not even for me. <laughs> Despite my despair, David then smiled and volunteered for the longest, most boring and difficult job on the day. Looking after me. <laughs> Despite the way he votes and his conviction to do so, the backing we feel from Marion and David's selfless attitude is cherished. Thank you both so much. The support networks out there, made up of friends and acquaintances, were immense. I'm sure I'll be saying thank you for the next four years. <laughs> to my wonderful wife, Bridget, you own half of this speech. I wish the rules were different and you could be right here holding my hand, reveling in the knowledge that you caused this as much as anyone. <laughs> For those that haven't heard it, I was asked to consider running by my predecessor, Melinda Povey. More on her later. To Mel's suggestion that I might consider running, I said I'm not sure that I'm the right person. Well, let me tell you, when I told Bridget what Mel said, she responded immediately, no, you should do it. You will fight for what is right. You won't be swayed by temptation. That's what makes you tick. I can tell you, I immediately knew with that level of support, I had to run. I had to make her proud. You see, Bridget's support is unwavering, and I'm sure many members in this parliament have a partner that is unwavering, someone that ensures the sum of the output of both of us is way more than what you or I could ever imagine. So babe, thanks for putting up with me and giving me to the community at your expense. I couldn't do it without you. I'm not going to ask. Do I have to ask? No, Ed. I was trying to, trying to buy time. Which brings me to my next point. You've got big shoes to fill. Melinda Pavey, if I've heard this once, I've heard it a thousand times. You see, Mel told a story during her valedictory speech of the auntie in Menindee Lakes, saying, Mrs, I know why you were shy about taking your shoes off. Look at the size of your feet. <laughs> now, really importantly, not only does Mel have large feet, she has a much larger respect from the wider community, and I will be doing very well if I can fill some of the void that you have left. The high level of respect from our community shows just how valuable a spokesperson you have really been. We have seen investment in the regions occur in the last few terms of government, all under your guidance. I ask the current, current government to continue providing strong support for our regions. The level of assistance I have received from Melinda has been amazing. Her anecdotes, her knowledge, her professionalism in this environment is second to none. Melinda. I will strive to continue the immense legacy that you have created in Oxley. Some of you may not know it, but Mel is also a long-term supporter and volunteer of many organisations across Oxley, especially in surf life saving. To Melinda, Warren, Jack and Emily, thank you for your contribution of 20 years to the people of New South Wales. For those who remember my early days in the Maclay Valley, it's safe to say that I might not have got it all right in my teens. However, I'm pleased to say that my parents instilled in me the work ethic to try to improve, to try to excel, and I did do well in one area, sport. By the age of 15, despite having a few difficulties, I had two mentors from football that had more imp impact on shaping me than they ever knew. I never told them. To Paul Fian and Tony Kellerman, thank you for making the effort to continue the work towards guiding me into a better person. I may not have said it. You may never have seen it, but boy, did it make a difference. I ask all of us to keep mentoring and giving adolescents a second chance. That chance may lead to a chance to excel. Following that, I joined the military at the age of 20. During my time in the forces, 
I found the final pieces of the puzzle in teaching me the discipline and reliability that I was missing. I took the regiment away quickly. After all, there was excitement and structure. Imagine a young fellow who gets to fire big guns and lob grenades and imagine your targets. It was a lot of fun and I was sold. The time I spent in the Air Force and prior to that in the Army Reserve was instrumental in making me the man I am today. To anyone thinking about joining the military, investigate it. Ask questions. As our Australian military provides you with a wide range of employment options. It is a very noble and respectable career in keeping our country safe. It may even lead to a life of service to community, as it did for me. To this day, I still miss the camaraderie, mateship and structure, and I salute all members of our military that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, have served or are serving today, lest we forget. From the time I left the military, my determination and relentless drive to serve saw me attend Newcastle University. I pursued a physiotherapy degree that taught me to look critically at the evidence available and to always listen to the other side of the conversation or decision. You can't have robust, open and fair debate without the pure act of listening to those who have a difference of opinion. A cool head is what is required when making decisions that affect our wider community. And I hope that this skill in itself has set me up for a much better representative of our people. I pledge that I will listen to the government and crossbench to work with them and my colleagues to better represent our colleagues and the diverse community of Oxley. The vision for Oxley that I hold is one of respect, of parity, and of practicality. I would like to see the city and major towns acknowledging the importance of the regions and all the small villages in between. I would like to envisage a world where all parties acknowledge and respect the contribution of our rural folk rather than keeping the cupboard down to the bare essentials. I went to the election looking for funding for Valor Industrial Estate which is a crucial release of land halfway between Sydney and Brisbane that would, meet, that would bring much needed economic stimulus. I asked for funding for the Warhope Sporting Precinct, a critical project for an overcrowded town lacking in sports facilities like no other I have seen. I sought funding for the Bellingen and Warhope hospital upgrades that are beyond necessary. Both buildings need upgrades that I will be requesting the government funds through this term. I also requested funding for more childcare in Kempsey through a building to be built on the Kempsey District Hospital grounds which would have allowed critical, skilled mothers and fathers to return to an essential. There are a host of other measures that were brought up after travelling as far and wide during, throughout the electorate as I could. Some of the service provision measures were more police, more healthcare workers and enticements to recruit and retain our quality healthcare staff, teachers and emergency workers, as well as more funding and capability to improve our roads. These projects will remain my focus for the next four years, as well as ensuring we have sufficient housing, both affordable and available, and better planning rules to ensure zombie DAs are dissolved. By the way, as the Oxley electorate sits between Port Macquarie and Coffs Harbour, it is important to have great ties with our neighbouring areas and I look forward to closely working with Gurmesh and Leslie. Where is he? Hello. <laughs> and of course, it would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Adam who sits up on the tablelands. I would look forward to closely working with him as well. It is also important that I acknowledge the federal representatives in my region, Pat Conahan and David Gillespie, two great mentors who have provided some fantastic advice and are amazing local members for their region. It has been a pleasure to talk with you today and I look forward to joining those here in the chamber for a few drinks and a bite to eat after the speeches. We will all be celebrating together as soon as I can make it home to catch up with the people that are watching online. 
In summary, I am very driven and would like to end up with the commitment to my colleagues and Oxley. I will live up to the responsibility of office and represent you with true, local, grounded and practical views. A transparency that our constituents expect. Each decision I take will involve my values of fairness, openness, genuine warmth and empathy for those involved. And the decisions will be guided by accountability and transparency. I invite all constituents to look into my voting decisions and spend time asking why if you disagree. These values are the ones that resonate within me and remain the driver for my need to be reliable, consistent and fiercely accountable to the people of Oxley. Because those hard-working people, those reliable people, those happy people, they are Oxley people. It's high time we acknowledge the regions and have uniform mindsets in this place for all of New South Wales. Thank you. Well, I thank the member for Oxley for his inaugural speech.